Um, this work is also in collaboration with Luis Garay and Mercedes Martin Benito. And well, the first thing we are going to do is just defining the Schunger effect. The Schunger effect is a non perturbative particle creation phenomenon which happens when we couple such a strong electric field to a, a certain matter field. In this work, we are going to assume that this matter field is a charged a scalar matter field. You know that dealing with this complex a scalar field is just completely equivalent to dealing with two, two real scalar fields. And this is what we are going to do. We are going to assume that this mass, uh, massive field is in Minkowski space time and that the electric field is classical. So we will neglect back reaction here. Also spatially homogeneous and time dependent. We are going to fix the temporal gauge and we will denote as A of T uh, as the vector potential associated to the electromagnetic field, to the electric field. Then, obviously, this matter field satisfies a Klein Gordon, equ Klein -Gordon equation. So, we will now, now that we have all the ingredients of the classical theory, we are going to proceed to quantize this classical theory and we will follow the canonical quantization approach. And what we are going to use is the spatial homogeneity of the electric field, and so that of the klein gordon equation of the matter field. It is useful to expand each real scalar field of the theory, which will be denoted as phi, in Fourier modes, which we denote here as z of t. Each of these modes, z of t, satisfy decoupled harmonic oscillator equations, one equation for each wave vector k. Uh, each of these harmonic oscillator equations are completely dependent or determined uh, by these time dependent frequencies. And each time dependent frequencies satisfy, uh, sorry, are uh, strongly dependent on the vector potential, which in turn define the electric field, the external electric field. Well, by the point here is that this canonical quantization approach is strongly dependent on the particular solution set of T that we choose in term, uh, to, to expand our field operator. Indeed, given a particular solution set of T, this defines particular expressions, part particular annihilation and creation operators, and this defines the quantum field operator. This annihilation and creation operators has to satisfy commutator relations, the commutator relations shown here. But as I'm telling you, for each particular solution, this procedure gives another quantum field operator. So the question is, which particular solutions of the harmonic oscillator equations should we choose in order to expand this um, quantum field operator? And these are precisely the canonical quantization ambiguities. That is the topic of this talk. So for a fixed for a particular solution of the harmonic oscillator equation, uh, this is the, the, to provide a particular solution of the harmonic oscillator equation is completely equivalent to give some initial conditions of these uh, equations. And in turn, it is completely equivalent to uh, define annihilation and creation operators, as we saw before. Equivalently, also, a, a vacuum is completely determined when we give. This, uh, this particular solution, uh, where the vacuum is defined as the state which is annihilated by all the annihilation operators. So the important thing to remark here is that as long as we do not impose any criteria to the quantization, the choice of a particular solution is completely arbitrary. And that's why, in general, in the literature, uh, we can find some criteria in order to reduce this ambiguity, this canonical quantization ambiguities in the choice of a particular solution of these equations. For instance, if we consider a free matter field in Minkowski space time, then this classical system has Poincare symmetry. And it is found that the only particular solutions, set of T, which, uh, which uh, um, have a quantum which constructs, which leads to a quantum theory uh, which preserves the classical symmetries, which is Poincare, which is Poincare invariant also, are plane waves. However, when we apply the, our electric field in order to recover the stringer effect, 
What we have now is that we don't have Poincaré symmetry. It is broken because time translational invariance is broken. And then canonical ambiguities appear in the choice of this particular solution. In the literature, it is, find, it is found some different choices of these particular solutions. For example, vacua, minimizing oscillations of the number of particles, or adiabatic vacua based on the WKB approximation. Now, let's define the most important magnitude here in, in this work, which is the number of created particles. And in order to define this magnitude, we have to fix two vacua. One first vacua, uh, giving some initial conditions of the harmonic oscillator equations at time t sub zero, which will be called as the reference vacuum, and another vacuum, uh, giving initial conditions at time t, which in turn define, as we saw, some annihilation and creation operators, which we will level here as uh, with level T. Okay, so this define uh, the number of created pairs at time T with respect to the reference vacuum uh, that we have defined in this way. So this magnitude just compares these two chosen vacua. And of course, it is strongly depends on the canonical ambiguities, it strongly depends on the particular uh, vacua that we have chosen here. Now we are interested in choosing, in sorry, in uh, finding an integral differential equation for this number of created particles. And to do so, we have to go to classical kinetic theory. In classical kinetic theory, there is an equation, the so-called uh, classical Blasov uh, equation, uh, which is a closed equation of motion for the probability distribution of particles in a non-equilibrium system where we neglect collisions. In order to construct the quantum version of it, uh, now the, N, the, um, the number of created particles at each time t uh, will play the role of this probability distribution. The standard version that is found in the literature of this quantum Basov equation is this one that uh, I showed you here. Okay, this standard version, which is important to remark, is that assumes particular vacua in this definition. And the vacua assumed is uh, the zero order adiabatic vacuum, which is defined providing these initial conditions. Okay. But now we are interested in generalizing this quantum Dassault equation, which is an integral differential equation for this number of liquid particles, in order to accommodate general vacua. So we go from this class standard quantum Dassault equation to this generalized quantum Dassault equation that is our proposal. However, let's note that this, whereas in this general uh, standard quantum Dassault equation only depends on the physics of the system through this uh, time-dependent frequency, the generalized quantum Dassault equation also depends on the chosen vacua at intermediate times through these parameters, through these three parameters shown here. So this generalized quantum mass of equation knows about the ambiguities of the canonical quantization. Now let's put aside just for a moment this generalized quantum mass of equation and let's consider another criteria in, a, in another criterion in addition to the preservation of the classical symmetries in the quantum, the quantum theory in order to reduce the canonical ambiguities in the choice of a particular solution of the harmonic oscillator equations. And this is the unitary implementation of the dynamics. This unitary implementation of the dynamics, which in other words mean uh, just as we did in, as we do in quantum mechanics, imposing that the time evolution operator is a unitary operator in our quantum theory, it uh, succeeds in reducing the canonical ambiguities to a unique, unitarily equivalent family of quantizations. But what are the physics of this criterion? Well, this criterion is completely equivalent to require that the total number of created particles at each fixed finite time t is finite. So no divergences, uh, this magnitude has no divergences. In particular, as we are considering massive fields, we don't have um, infrared divergences, but we could have ultraviolet divergences. But imposing this criterion, we don't have them. So, uh, we have now a low contribution to the creation from ultraviolet modes. 
In particular, these ultraviolet modes have been constrained, have been uh, reduced its ambiguities. In particular, more precisely, these are the initial conditions that define these uh, ultraviolet modes or large values of K, the weight vector. Uh, this function W, which parameterizes uh, its module, before it could be any function that we could imagine. But however, if we uh, impose that our quantum theory allows for unitary implementation of the dynamics, then this W function has to be more or less the time dependence frequency of the harmonic oscillator equation, which I remember that strongly depends on the uh, vector potential. And why do I say that uh, this W function has, has to be more or less the time dependent frequency? Because we can add any function provided that it converges sufficiently fast. And sufficiently fast means that it converges faster than k to the minus one half in the ultraviolet. With this criterion, we are sure the unitary implementation of the dynamics. And we have reduced the ambiguities to this contribution here that has to converge fast enough. Note that if we, for example, choose a Minkowski plane waves in order to quantize a theory where there is uh, an electric field applied, then this doesn't allow for a unitary implementation of the dynamics. Why? Because this, the W function, which corresponds to Minkowski plane waves, has to be a, a, a constant independent of time because it does, doesn't depend on the vector potential. And then here, the this reduced ambiguity contribution is a constant, so it doesn't converge to CU, so therefore, it doesn't entirely implement the dynamics. But now the question is, what does it happen here? What does it happen for contributions which converges faster than k to the minus one half? And in order to answer that, now we have to use the generalized quantum loss of equation that I showed you before. Calculating the leading order behavior in the ultraviolet of this generalized quantum loss of equation what we find is that this leading order strongly depends on the ambiguities. If we put here contributions, which, okay, converges faster than k to the minus one half in order to uh, assure the uh, unitary dynamics, but doesn't converge with, which doesn't converge faster than k to the minus two. And this is a problem because um, ultraviolet uh, modes see only short scales and we would expect that these ultraviolet modes um, sh shouldn't be aware of the canonical ambiguities of the system and only know about the uh, physics of the system through for example the time dependent frequency and this is exactly what happens when we consider contributions here which converges faster than k to the minus two when we expand for large values of k this generalized quantum loss of equation now we see that the leading order of this expansion coincides exactly uh, with the standard quantum loss of equation for the zero order adiabatic modes, which was, I remember, completely independent of the canonical ambiguities. And obviously, this generalized quantum loss of equation uh, still depends on the canonical ambiguities, but they are, this dependence is in the subdominant terms and not a leading order. So we consider that uh, these modes here with these contribution functions converging faster than k to the minus two are physically reasonable and provide physically reasonable quantum theories. Well, our conclusions are that in the canonical quantization of a scalar field coupled to a homogeneous time-dependent electric field, there are the ambiguities which can be reduced by, for example, imposing in uh, the preservation of the classical symmetries in the quantum theory and the unitary dynamics criteria. We have also generalized the standard quantum loss of equation to arbitrary vacua. And we have recovered the standard quantum loss of equation at leading order in the ultraviolet for a subfamily of modes allowing for unitary dynamics. And therefore, we have deduced a stronger criterion than the unitary dynamics in order to reduce the ambiguities in the canonical quantization. Thanks for your attention. And if you have any questions, thanks.
Thank you very much, Alvaro, for, for your very nice talk. Um, are there any questions? I have one. It's possible. Um, so thank you for, for the talk. It was really interesting. Um, I have just one question. Um, what's the difference between the vacua you choose and you construct and the typical adiabatic vacuum expansion that it's traditionally used? Is there a difference? Are they equivalent? Or no, it, this generalized quantum loss of equation is for general vacua. So you can you can put any initial conditions in order to define the the your modes. So it's it is completely general. In particular, in this family of vacuum, which is completely general, we can you, you can put zero further adiabatic approximations or any other uh, adiabatic other approximation for the initial conditions, and you can apply this formula. Okay, but your restrictions about the leading order terms of the ah, okay, use, yeah, um, these restrictions are the only yeah, yeah. ones you need to fulfill, and that's it. And whatever vacuum you choose, uh -huh. yeah, just has to follow your your requirements of the of the uh, k order that you impose there in the right. Yeah, in particular, all the adiabatic vacua are in this family. This is a larger family than the other adiabatic vacua. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, nice, thank you. Thank you. Um, Jeff, uh, go ahead if you want. Yeah. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, maybe this is a naive question, but um, these vacuums that you have, are they halamard, or what do you know about? Their micro local structure. Yeah, we expect we, we haven't looked that uh, yet, but we expect that the Hadamard states unitarily implement, uh, unitarily implement the dynamics, but uh, we don't know that yet. We have to verify that. But we, we think that these Hadamard states are inside our family. Ah, okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Um, 